So we are starting off with animal classification. So whenever we talk about a particular topic, we'll just go about the basic classification. So. Yes. Now is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So first we talk about mammals. So you can just whenever you define teachers based on the content and the class you're going to handle, you can simplify the definitions. Need not be more <clears throat> technical or theoretical. You can just say that mammal is the type of animal that gives birth to babies. Okay. And they feed their young ones with milk. That is enough. A simple definition from its own body. Feed milk from its own body. So simply you can define a mammal is a type of animal that gives birth to babies, not eggs. And it feeds its young ones milk from its own body. Simply you can define. And then you can give a few examples of mammals. Then next can be bird. A bird, a creature with feathers and wings that helps to fly. Simple definition. So, example of uh, a bird, you can ask children to give examples. You can even ask them, once you start the flow, surely they will come out. Now you can ask them, what is a reptile? If they know, they will say, or at least they will give you the example if you are going to teach the same chapter in class four or five. Maybe the third standard won't be knowing it. But four or five, surely they, if you ask, what do you understand by reptile or how a reptile is defined? He might not be knowing the definition, but surely he will give some example. So you can say that reptile is an animal that has cold blood and skin covered with scales. Okay. And uh, whose young ones, of course, come out of X. And uh, you can give example, lizards, yeah. etc. Then amphibians. Amphibians are all that can breathe and absorb water through their very thin skin. Example, you can give frogs. Then comes fish. Fish, it's an animal that lives and breathes in water and it swims also there. Few examples you can give. Then comes the insects. Insects, of course, they are familiar. A small, it's generally they have six legs, two pairs of wings and a body which is divided into three parts. A few examples we can give for that too. Then, after classifying the basic classification of animals, you can classify widely into two types. Like wild animals and domestic animals. See, there are different types of animals. The main difference are two. Some animals are domestic. So they have very strong relationship with humans. There are some animals are wild and they are in their natural habitat. So broadly you can classify it like this and you can give few examples of domestic and wild. At this stage, you can even ask whether you like to have uh, animals at home or you are scared or you are allergic anything general to bring some interest and involvement in children, you can ask. So after <laughs> classifying this, you. you can talk about the food habits. You can talk about the food habits like what is a herbivore, carnivore, omnivore. Then you can ask them to give examples. So that only eats plants. You remember herbs. And then it is easy for you to remember her view. So the animal which eat only plants. And then you ask the child to remember two, definitely. 
So any question anywhere, two things, at least we'll ask to name, fill in or identification, whatever it is. So he should be more familiar with the common names. Carnivore is one that eats only meat. So you can ask him to remember lion and tiger. Omnivore, you can again give some example. When you talk about homes of animals, you simply don't talk like dog lives in a kennel or a cow and cattle are kept in a shed. First, you have to start off how domestication started. So how you go about it. When you're talking about domestic animals, how you will introduce this topic? When actually we started to domesticate animals. Yes, Shiva Priya, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, actually domestic animals, from domestic animals, we are getting benefit from those no, animals. No, ma'am. Why did we domesticate? Why we didn't domesticate lion or tiger? Why did we uh, drive with horse or dog or cow? Why did we do Kind this? animals. Kind animals. So, protect we them. It helps uh -huh. us. No, no, why domesticate animals? We can animal. get the useful things. Huh? To we protect can them. Because things they are from the domesticated animals. Them. No. Because they are benefited from those animals, we need to protect them. How did we know that? Actually, we started off with a dog, ma'am. That dog. So that's what when it, or when all this happened. When I mean, early man, man uh, stage, from early man stage. Yes. See, when after we started agriculture, agriculture, agriculture after uh, inventing the yes. fire. Agriculture only, uh, see, when people were nomads, we were hunter-gatherers roaming around hunting, okay? At that time, there were few animals which were not wild. So, he could identify that they are not wild, they are very uh, helpful, brilliant, something mm -hmm. like that. And we can tame them, use them for our needs. So agriculture. So then we uh, started cultivating crops. We started using animals for plowing the field. Okay. Then we had more grains. We need to transport it. So we thought instead of carrying, we can ca use animals to carry the loads. So then he started identifying the animals which he could tame. Surely you would have tried lion and tiger also and burnt his fingers or even they would have lost their <laughs> lives. Okay. That would have happened, surely. Then they would have understood that these are the categories which we can keep it with us or which we can uh, have with, our, uh, with us to live with us and few categories which cannot be tamed. Though, of course, you might say that they are in zoo, circus and all. But any time, they might be wild and violent. Yes? Anybody cannot go near a lion, okay? Or a tiger. Mm -hmm. though, it is, though it is tamed for uh, suckers mm -hmm. and other things. Yes, they are kept in a human cage. We hear for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so many things. It's a bit dangerous. They are wild in nature. Yes. So then you can start off this. That's the reason we started domesticating animals. And we only decided that this much space enough for cow or a, a dog or like that. And we gave names on our own. Okay. Specific uh, names. And we started keeping cow and cattle in a shed. It can be open also. It can be closed also based on the number and how we keep it. So then you can uh, talk about all these animals and their homes. Then homes of animals where, which are natural. Now lion and tiger, they naturally live in a den. Elephants, they live under a tree. Actually, they don't live, they just move around. Then 
bear and fox in caves, monkeys in tree branches. This is a basic common things which we discuss often. So these are the homes of animals which live in the natural condition. Then comes the bird category. How will you classify birds? When you're going to talk about birds, we simply define that it's an animal with uh, weak feather and uh, which can fly, okay? Now, how you're going to classify, like we classified animals as domestic and wild. Here, how you're going to classify it? Birds that can't fly. Based on the feathers. That can fly short distance. Yes. Three ba basic categories, you can say three types. A birds which can fly, birds which cannot fly, and water birds. Basic three varieties you can tell them to remember. Simple terms. Okay. See, these are the birds that cannot fly. These are the birds that can fly. You can just have a look at it. These are the birds that cannot fly. These are the water birds. Now, um, here also, I again repeat, based on your content, whether you have about the birds, the beak and feet, we will talk about it. If you don't have, so we need not, when we explain, whatever we have in our reader, based on the content, slightly you can go ahead. You need not be explaining all the types of beaks and feet if it is not mentioned in the reader. Yes? Now, if we are going to talk about it, you can tell them. It's designed by nature, uh, the types of beaks and the feet. It's designed in such a way that it helps the birds for that particular moment. Now, this type of feet is helpful for swimming. Yes, it's all yes. joined. So it is helpful for swimming. And the next one, though it looks like, but it is not joined, there is gap. Okay, so this can be used for swimming as well as walking. This only for walking. It can just walk. This is for perching. It can just hold and stand. This is for seizing prey. Can, like an uh, eagle, vulture, they just come and then grab and go. So to hold it, they have such type of feet. And this for climbing, you can call this uh, like woodpecker, which helps it to move. And now when you talk about beaks, now I think you get an idea how you are going to talk about it because it's given there filtering. So, water birds. According to their food. Yes. Uh, they take it. It's filtered. Then this is for probing to take the worms or nectar. Okay. So they... Nectar. Okay. So they... Mine is echoing. Then, this is for catching insects, cuckoo bird. You can give example for each variety. One example you can give so that he can remember it. Then, cracking seeds, sparrow. The beak helps it to crack the seed. Then, this 
bend type of beak is only for tearing the meat vulture or eagle you Owl. can yes then this for drilling holes so you can give woodpecker as an example so uh, you can talk about why it is like that when you are going to talk about their feet and beak simple simple definition is more than enough instead of going in detail any other method you use while teaching this of course we will be drawing on the board when we talk about this yes yes we draw we won't be drawing all this on the same day i'm sure yes yes ma'am maybe two or three and then explain about it ask the child to give more examples or whether he has noticed or observed or whether he has seen a picture of that particular bird okay because nowadays for the past two years the children are not moving anywhere so it is going to be class 3 nothing you would have seen apart from picture or uh, whatever it is so you can just discuss in general and uh, don't teach all in one day so it won't register in their minds as teach three if the reader has all this teach three one day then uh, do other things like reading and other things example interacting then next class you can continue with the recap of these three and then add on to the other ones then we are going to talk about reptiles so here he should know the main thing about a reptile is its scale rough scale skin and it has lungs for breathing a reptile is a cold blooded and has a backbone most reptiles they hatch eggs i can give few examples of reptiles Can I move on to the next slide? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Then comes insects. Sure, also you have insects which are good, which are not good. Both categories are there. You can talk about harmful insects and beneficial insects. harmful insects which spoil yes which spoil the plants uh, which uh, even cause diseases to us beneficial bugs they help us so both the ways we have insects then we are talking about amphibian so amphibian is an animal that usually lives part of its life in water and part of it in land again this is also cold blooded and has a backbone but most amphibians they have a smooth and moist skin and they don't have a scale and the rough sora 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 ne irkad it will be very smooth and you can give few examples then animal products this is what you said before why we domesticate animals because they uh, give that's mm -hmm. what you said yes after taming them only we came to know that we can use all the taming them only we came someone's, it's echoing someone's audio so these are all the products from animals poultry and meat products dairy products such as milk ghee and cheese honey and bees wax from bees and uh, apart from food we have few other things like fiber wool and other things what we get from animals now ma'am previous slide please 
Yes, ma'am. You are noting it down, Shiva Priya. Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. Okay, ma'am. Proceed. Yes, ma'am. Now comes the interesting topic, animal now sense. Comes the interesting topic. Somebody's audio is echoing. I don't know who it is. Please. Please. Audio is echoing. I don't know who it is. Please. So animal senses, you will uh, generally define the sense organs. Okay. Define the sense organs. Okay. So you can just define it. Taste. All these animals too have, and not only us. Yes. Uh, yes. uh, I'm sorry, teachers. I don't know whose audio. I don't know whose audio. No. Sense organs of living beings. Yes. See, the slide is self explanatory. You can just go through it. Just go through it. See, this whisper is for feeling, okay. And this is deducting okay. the moment. Deducting the moment. Ma'am, your audio is not clear. My audio is not having problem. Ma I could hear the echo of someone else. Ma'am, Anusara, ma'am, mic. Huh? Anusara, ma'am, mic. Anusara's mic is. Uh, Even Rosalyn Jo, ma'am, if she tries to unmute, I think we get this echo. Darshana, can you make out who else are in unmute? Um, Anusara, ma'am. Okay, can you just ask to unmute? It's not uh, asked to unmute. It's in mute only, but it's not showing. That it is in mute. Anu, ma'am, sometimes if you leave and join, it will be all right. That's what we do. When it is echoing, we just leave and join again. Okay. okay. Can I move to the next slide? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma See, now you observe this picture. This is for eyes. How do you think the eagle has spotted the food on the ground? I have a very sharp uh, eye vision. Yes. Very vision. Yes. From top of the mountain also. It, it can, can see four them. times the distance than that of us. Okay. Yeah. It has 20 by 5, whereas we have 20 by 20 vision. So that's the reason, even though it is uh, far away, it can just sense the prey and it can catch it in no time. Now. One minute, I got stuck. Yes. Now you just see this. Now you can see a tiger is able to spot the prey at night. 
Okay. How is this possible? Smell. Hmm? By smelling? Smell. Oh, Smell. we are talking only about the sight. Oh, sight. It has a very wide, rounded pupil that allows the maximum light to enter into the eye. Okay. When necessary. So that is the main reason the night vision is more good and it tries to catch the prey during night. Your voice is not hearable, ma'am. Now, now we are going to talk about the eye and their position in animals. See, you would have noticed the animals' eyes. All are not like us in front. Yes? Have you ever noticed? Some animals or birds have eyes at the side of their face. But some have forward-facing eyes like us humans. What is the difference between these two? Why do they have eyes like that? What is the idea or what? Why nature has given them that type of eyes? Because they have to look in, uh, in all the directions, like front, side, everything. Who? Oh. Animals. All the animals don't have the same type, no ma'am. That's what I'm telling you. As they can focus on their uh, on different things at a time, ma'am. Yes. See, it's divided as the predator and prey. Predator na wait a yard poor like a singamo polio patel na. You can see they have the vision like this. They can see by both the eyes. This is the vision, the one which I've drawn here. Left eye vision is this much, right eye vision is this much. But they cannot see at the back. Okay, they can only have the front view. Whereas prey, like the small animals, you can call it. See, they can see by both the eyes. They can see by left this much and the right this much. So that's why they can easily escape. They will escape in no time because their sense of vision has more dimension rather than the predator. You got it? The eyes they have. That's the reason the predator has the side view and the front view. This is the difference. Now, yes. Then, ma just a minute, ma'am. Previous slide, please. Yes, ma'am. Just two minutes, ma'am. Any, any, uh, I mean, I can wait. No issues. Yes, ma'am. Now, smell. The animals use their sense of smell also. How do they use this? See, a tiger or an animal, they have a boundary. Okay. The other animal won't... Uh, encroach there or what do you call it? They won't go there. They have a marking with their urine or with their smell. They identify and they move out of that place. Okay. They have a unique scent to mark their territory. And the other animal just move away. They won't stay there. So they use their sense of smell to identify that and uh, they even have unique uh, sense. See, even we, when we go near the, I mean, when you, for example, you visualize you're going to a zoo. Those who have gone to the zoo, 
near the wild animal area you can easily make out from the smell of it that this is going to be the lion's cage or the tiger's cage they have a distinct smell yes or no even snake have you ever experienced that no ma'am no next no. time ponella paranga dura kende and the smell theriyum id adoda smell abdin you can make it out that yes, this but ha huh? ஒன்னுமெல்ஸ் <laughs> 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 that okay i got it yes ah yes ma'am old temples you can make out yes yes ma'am even uh, you can make out uh, the place or the room which you have not used for so many days yes ma'am only closed we can if you open suddenly you, when you open it different. you can make out the smell of or the cockroach and other things you can easily make out actually each animal has a distinct smell which you can make out and yes, hen ma'am. so from far away from the places uh, if they are having the hen form that also the smell will come no ma'am yes some- yes that's what i'm saying so those who are having animals those who are trained in no time they will identify it so animals also can do that so they sense by way of smell each animal has a distinct smell ma'am camel donkey horse each one elephant everything has a distinct uh, smell no smell they use for both reasons okay one to have a boundary another thing to attract the female so that time also they use their uh, smell some female bees attract the males through their men and Ma'am, the what male silk worm more the it find out it female by the smell only ma'am yes and what we do as humans we too try to protect ourselves with the smell see that's why we apply odor mass or uh, uh, something else so that that smells uh, smell show away the mosquito or something even for flies we use some uh, disinfectant or something like that so that it doesn't attract that a cockroach we use spray yes so we just shoo away with that type of smell so smell can be good or bad it can attract or it can move away so mosquitoes cannot see rather they sense our presence through their heightened smell sense of smell and body heat they only come near us through that they don't uh, have vision actually now do you know some fact to make it interesting we are comparing the smell scale as humans the base so deer can smell 9 times better than us dogs 20 times like that and given the variation keeping human as the scale now sound animals birds reptiles they have special ways to communicate with each other and some make sounds others they just make vibrations or echo to warn of danger so that is also defined and uh, mostly you all have heard that elephants ears they can hear 
even the faintest sound 20 times lower than us also the elephants can hear Ma'am, even a tiger's roar sound can be heard three kilometers from away, ma'am. Yes, yes. You can. This is just for knowledge. You can just go through it. Uh, taste and then only comes that. See, some animals have taste buds only on their tongue. But some can sense of, uh, prey and food through their external body, but like whiskers. Tiger is the best example. Skin, elbows, fins, etc. Here you have few facts which you can just go through it. See, all these are not for testing teachers, just knowledge to share. Fun fact and other things, it's just to share, that's it. Then taste and smell, it goes hand in hand. So see, taste of food particle is further enhanced by its smell, the way it looks, the way it feels. Okay. So while eating, almost all the senses come into play. So the basic survival instinct for us is food only. So while animals taste similar flavors as humans, uh, all the flavors they too taste, but not all animals have the same number of taste buds. They differ in each of them. See, few food items only we feed the animals, okay? Though they are domestic. We don't feed everything to uh, all. See, a way to find out what's good before you put in your mouth. See, they taste with their feet. This one. Cats, they cannot taste sweets. Again, a fact. No. Skin is the largest sense organ of any living being. It has numerous cells which help in feeling, sensing the surroundings. So these are the thing. What are these and what do you understand by this? Migration. Yes. Birds. Why do they migrate? In search of food. In search and, of food. Uh, yes. For better yes. living conditions. Birds, they migrate uh, from one place to other and come back exactly to the same spot. Because when the resource here is over, they move to another place. Okay. And then once there it is over, they knew that here it's there. So they come back here. So that's the reason. They migrate and they return back to the same place. Two reasons only, food and the nesting location. They need place for nest also, no. Why do they need a nest? To lay eggs. Yes, and protect young protect ones. Protect okay. young ones. So, they, I mean, mostly the birds build nest on trees. Okay. So, every time, uh, all the trees... They shed their leaves in different season, okay? So they don't feel that they can, uh, uh, I mean, build a nest here or that. That is also another reason for the birds. Due to the season. Yes. yes, they migrate 
for that reason. So the basic reason for the birds to migrate is to search for good food and nesting location. That's the reason they migrate. And again, they are back to the same place. After that particular period or season is over. And again, another fun fact of feel or touch. See, you would have seen some animals do not mind when insect or bird sit on them. Buffalo or the hippopotamus. But some even you would have noticed, you just drop a pebble in a pond or a river, you can see the movement. Have you noticed this? Yes, yes, also, yes, yes that's what when you store, throw a stone or something, not only octopus, I'm talking about all fish and other things, they move immediately. Whereas buffalo, uh, it doesn't bother if something is. That's why we say it's thick skinned. Then now comes the interesting topic which we have to talk to the children causes of threat to wildlife. What are all the reasons? So what is habitat distraction? How you will explain this term habitat destruction? Few for example, some, some animals live living. only in the forest areas, no? Okay. If the people used to cut the trees, deforestation yeah. leads to that habit destruction. Yes. Why do they cut? To expand for agriculture reasons or to use the resorts or for to build houses to make it as uh, a habitat for us or urbanization. That is also possible for habitat destruction. Then over-exploitation. Uh, how you will talk about this over-exploitation? The continuous usage. Yes. Yeah, we kill quickly. Uh, we, we don't give time enough for it to reproduce and then uh, keep the cycle continuous. So over exploitation is the harvesting of animals at a faster rate than the species ability to recover. So that is also the reason for the threat. Then poaching. Hunters. 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 Yeah. They will Illegal the trading. That is the main reason. So many animals are endangered. Then what is culling? Destroy. No. Culling is the deliberate and selective killing of wildlife by governments for various reasons. It need not be uh, the same. So it can be for various reasons. Deforestation, of course, you all know. Cutting trees cutting down trees. for human purpose, resources. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be anything. The same what we spoke about, the habitat destruction. Here also, it comes there. So what we have to do is, how to overcome this? Protect the animals. In Planting more trees. Yes. Planting more trees. Planting more trees. We have to plant more trees. Reduce the usage. Reduce the usage of trees. Things yes. which is made from wood. Ma'am, some reserve areas of forest should be there, ma'am. Reserve area. No one should allow to enter into that area to cut the trees and all. Should have sanctuaries. Yes. Mm, increasing national parks, ma'am. Okay. So to overcome deforestation is you can plant more trees. Then another uh, cause for the threat is the climate change. 
see nowadays the climate conditions are not same as it was before that is also one of the reasons wherein the animal number is getting reduced yes that's also one of the reasons then hunting pollution pollution yes, yes. you should stop hunting animals so that's also one of the major i should say so if we stop hunting means we should stop eating which is a very controversial topic be a vegan or be a vegetarian you can i mean somehow say then globalization that's also one of the threat that's what the climate change again now these are the extinct and endangered animals what is extinct now present it is not now no more no more no, no more. more it's not to be found yes it's, and these are all on the verge of danger stage they are the right hand side endangered animals from india okay now how to conserve these animals so we have to protect again the voice teachers please can you mute so how to conserve the animals you have to protect the ecosystem and the environment then only you can protect the animals that live there so what all the things you have to follow so first thing adapt plant based diet what i said before avoid participating in hunting activities avoid using products that tested on animals avoid using animal products and by products for manufacture conserve the natural resource then increased use of nature based construction materials so that we can save wood okay preservation and restoration of natural habitats and forests like as you all said we can have more national parks or uh, wildlife sanctuary wherein they are left on their own It helps to grow in number any other way you would like to suggest of conserving animals ma'am if the area is said to be a sun prohibited hmm? the government had to uh, make some laws that uh, the hunter should be prevented from entering into the forest to hunting the animals or cutting the trees whatever it may be okay so as teachers can we tell our children to be more kind towards animals not to hurt harm them yes we can have more yes, peace ma yes ma'am yes we can and uh, we can ask them to protect if possible be kind to them leave them open don't have birds or something like that in your cage let it can even adopt an animal member by for conservation 